Hey, good morning to you. Happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, we do have this system coming to the northeast, still going to drop just a few inches of snowfall. And this next system is still coming, showing almost the same pattern between most of the weather models. Now, the impacts I will go through for you. I do show one day is more severe than the next day. So I will update you on the severe weather as well. And if you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. I do upload all year long, so make sure you hit that subscribe button, click that bell, <laughs> get all the notifications. And just so y'all know the update on the raffle, I did post in my community tab. There's going to be more than one prize for it. It is every month from now on, forever on this channel. I have been getting the ads in my emails and such to put on my videos. They offer $1,200 and such for each one. My content is never about making money off you. My content is about helping you. So I will always give back to y'all. Y'all have given so much to me. And I will announce every month when these live streams will be for this raffle so I can give you your free gifts. And they go over $1,000 in prizes. So it's pretty good gifts, guys. So thank you so much for your help. I will keep you updated. All you got to do is just keep supporting my channel, keep watching videos, keep sharing, keep liking. Thank you so much for your support but thank you to all of you for making me for who i am i will always update you on these raffles and as we get closer to them i'll update you very often so you don't miss out and get your chance to get your free prizes as well so make sure you subscribe and click that bell if you want to be part of this community because we are the nicest and the most helping community i've ever seen on youtube now for the next six to ten days when we have that system coming down it is going to still elongate all the way to Canada, and it's going to create a lot of issues, but it is bringing cold weather with it. You are going to be below average temperatures in the south because of this as it moves through. But once you go from the 8 to the 14 days, you'll see that we are in our big above average. We are getting this heat wave coming through. It is going to warm up, but we're going to be in a steady pattern for the month where we're going to have these systems coming through the south and going out to northeast two or three times. And you do have your weather alerts out for y'all. This is for your snowfall totals. I'll go through that real quick. And remember, all the links are in the description to help save you time. And I also got the link in there for your live radar as well so you can watch this precipitation coming by and when you're getting snow. Now for Michigan, National Weather Service has you out for one to two inches in all this light blue, three to four inches in this dark blue, and less than an inch as you go towards Big Rapids and Northeast. And for the Northeast, they have y'all one to two inches and the rest of y'all getting two to three inches at most. A little bit more towards the New England states. And they also have a fine grade, less than an inch, and it just bombs to one to two, and then it goes three to four. But by Cape Cod and the Boston and the Cove, gets a chance for four to six inches of snowfall. And your severe weather is still going to kick off Wednesday going into Thursday, 15% chance for severe weather. But I'm showing Thursday going into Friday is way worse with more shear. But for Wednesday going into Thursday, you're still in severe weather for Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, Arlington, Texas, Plano, Texas, and Garland, Texas. And Thursday going into Friday, you're still in 15%. It's come down a little bit lower from Illinois, but you're still in 15% for Thursday going into Friday for Memphis, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Montgomery, Alabama. I'm showing there's a lot more shear from Thursday going into Friday. Wednesday going into Thursday is when it's going to elongate and go towards Canada. That second of that one-two punch is going to be Thursday into Friday. Now, when this elongates, still, we're still showing that, guys, all the energy, most of it, is going to go towards Canada. So it's not better news for them, but it's better news for us with our shear and our severe weather for Wednesday going into Thursday. Now, after that leaves from being elongated, we've been seeing this for a couple of weeks, that all the energy will go to the one in the south and it will strengthen as it goes towards northeast and you have a better chance for all this year when that system strengthens Thursday into Friday. Strengthens out the northeast. We have that little clipper that comes behind it. Don't get too deep and it goes right back up as well. Even the euro is agreeing that when you go 15th into the 16th that it stretches and gives all the energy to the one in Canada. That's why your severe weather event is not going to be too severe for Wednesday into Thursday. When you go Thursday into Friday, that's when a surface low is going to form up in the south. Now the euro has it a little bit weaker than GFS has it, and euro has it strengthening up as it goes out to northeast, just like GFS says, but not strong as the GFS is showing. That's the only two difference in the models with that clipper just clipping on through. So the difference is euro has it weaker, while GFS has it a lot stronger. And if you look at all those ensembles, you can see the most of them are in agreement this storm is going to transfer all the energy over to Canada. It's not going to be in the south. There's only a couple that is showing that it will be in the south. 
as it goes up to the northeast and strengthens on the way out with that as well. Now your main one is this first one right here. This is your control member. And you can see on the average that it does go up towards Canada. They get the strongest potential. But it also shows that it stays a little bit weaker and does form right there in Ohio Valley and strengthens up towards the northeast. So I'd say a little bit towards the GFS size, maybe starting a little bit later according to Euro, but still strengthening up according to GFS. And you can see through both weather models that on the 15th going into the 16th that we are very warm temperatures all the way up towards Canada. But as this system comes through, you can see it forms up with the snowfall and the freezing rain. Both models are on agreement with that. GFS has it more rainfall for Wisconsin as the system pushes through to the Ohio Valley. Now, the Euro does show that it does have that as well, but it don't have the snowfall on the wraparound going towards Nebraska or Kansas like the GFS is showing. Then as you go through another phase, you can see it going up towards Illinois. Euro takes it a little further south, still not as strong. Then as you take it again towards the northeast, uh, Michigan gets the snowfall on a wraparound with rainfall for everybody else, according to GFS. Euro is showing the same thing. It might go through the Ohio Valley a little bit further, while GFS takes all of that as rainfall on the second part. Euro shows that that could be actually snow going through as it goes out the northeast, maybe hitting the intercoastal northeast with some snow. GFS shows that temperature is still going to be way too warm, guys, and it's going to be all rain. So as we take a look with the members, now that we are literally four to five days away, four days of snowfall starts falling as it comes through. And you can see a lot of ensembles still show that it's going to be a lot of very heavy snowfall. But as you can see right here for your control member, that it is going to be a light amount of snow as it comes through. And it's mainly because the temperatures are still a little warm and it gets frozen a little late just like at canada but still is showing very much major snowfall this purple right here is from six to ten inches for iowa wisconsin and northern illinois as it goes across northern michigan and here's your look from the midwest as the snowfall comes through you see it starts off heavy then it weakens down until it goes towards canada but you don't get a whole bunch for Kansas or Nebraska. It's right on the line towards Iowa with major snowfall and right towards northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin with the major snowfall. And you can see a little bit closer as you look for the line for Illinois and for Iowa and Missouri. You can see a lot of the major snowfall. But the average of all these ensembles show that it will be anywhere from 6 to 10 inches and in all this purple. And the rest of y'all just going to be getting rain. And you look for Michigan and Wisconsin as the snowfall comes through. All the blue is 1 to 5 inches. And all this purple is 6 to 10 inches, which is pink, getting anywhere towards a foot. Now, I know it's been showing a lot of major snowfall before. But the trend is now that it's weakening down, still showing a lot of snowfall. But it's bringing it back northern. Now, when you look at the shear at 850 millibars, you can see right when you go from Wednesday into Thursday that it transfers all the energy to Canada. So you have severe weather for a little while, but the shear don't stick around. And the shear is very weak, considerably what is going to be Thursday and Friday for the south. Then once you go into Thursday, then it starts blowing up with that shear, strengthening it up, and carries that to the northeast with some strong winds. Especially on Thursday night, you got some strong winds passing through the northeast. Now it was showing Friday, but I say it's Thursday night through midnight for the northeast. So as you build up Wednesday afternoon, it really starts strengthening up with these lightning strikes. As you go into Thursday morning, then it reaches way up towards Tennessee and the Kentucky Valley. And it goes from 900 lightning strikes and within three hours, 2,800 lightning strikes. In three more hours, starts calming down to 1,300, 1,200, then it goes 1,600 again. Lower Alabama, that is a really hot spot. I've been seeing that for two days, almost three days that all this energy transfers from northern Louisiana, northern Mississippi, down to southern Alabama. So just be aware of that. That has been trending a lot. As it carries Thursday afternoon into Friday morning across the mid-Atlantic and the southeast, a little weak, but they got some strong cells that does pass by Virginia as you go into midnight for Friday. But a lot of thunderstorms mainly for the northeast. I don't see anything potentially dangerous for tornadoes. It is going to be in the south and the southeast, especially as you go from Wednesday night until Thursday and Thursday afternoon. Now, the Euro sees is just going to be a couple of hot spots for freezing rain. It also sees a hot spot from northeast Missouri and southwest 
Illinois for the most freezing rain for the temperature battle as this goes down and goes down again another night. Also right here for Northeast Ohio. And the full track of the snow has gone down greatly according to the Euro. Hardly any major snowfall at all. Bringing a couple inches to the panhandle of Texas. Going across Oklahoma all this three to five inches. Oklahoma, southern Missouri, southern and northern Illinois. A little bit for southern Wisconsin. Only three inches. Why are you getting three to five inches for Michigan, northern Indiana, northern Ohio, and maybe a little bit on the intercoastal northeast. That's about it. Not much at all. Now, the GFS always been showing this is going to be a wide temperature battle, and it's going to be training this precipitation in the same direction for hours, and that is going to happen. And it's been showing a lot of freezing rain. It's still showing up to a half an inch for northern Missouri, southeastern Iowa, northern Illinois, and all across Michigan. And a trail of sleet, too. More like a glazed to a little bit heavy, but more like it's going to be freezing rain and snow. But maybe a fifth of an inch as it goes across, very light amounts. Mostly it's going to be freezing rain and then snow, so it's going to be a lot of rain as well. Now, GFS is confirming that it still will be major snowfall coming with the system, but keep that with a grain of salt, guys, because you did see an ensemble that none of this pink will be there. But the update this morning shows it'll still be a widespread anywhere from 10 to 12 and more inches straight across Iowa, northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin still, and across northern Michigan, all the way into Canada. And GFS is still showing it's going to be major winds coming with the system, guys. Still starting up from Mexico, 60, 70 miles per hour winds. As you get to the 50 and 60 for New Mexico and Texas, across Oklahoma, Kansas, still 50 miles per hour wind gusts, high 50s. Then northern Louisiana, all across the upper half of the deep south, 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts, across Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, Ohio Valley, very much 50 or plus miles per hour wind gusts. Also across the Carolinas, Virginia, West Virginia, the bulk of it being where the bulk of this rainfall is going to be for the northern half of the deep south and the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. Also going right up towards the northeast. And very much high 50 to 60 miles per hour wind gusts for the northeast because this is where the storm strengthens as it goes out on that high ridge. And the 70 miles per hour wind gust has expanded from just to Boston Cove all around towards Maryland and Delaware on the coast, but very much 70 miles per hour wind gusts. And the Euro don't see none of that. The Euro never seen any winds with that. It's pretty much showing 40 miles per hour wind gusts as you go across, and that's about it. Nothing major. Maybe for the northeast, the only thing the Euro sees is maybe 50 to 60 miles per hour wind gusts for the coast of the northeast as this system strengthens and goes towards Canada. And the Euro says very light amounts of precipitation all this orange is one to one and a half inches maybe some two inches as you get into this red that's it and gfs still shows that it would be big of two inches all the way to northern illinois all across michigan and all into canada that's going to be a lot of snowfall for canada but it's still bringing heavy rainfall for the southeast as well and you can see how it takes two inches all the way up over michigan all the way into canada and for the southeast it's showing alabama georgia Upstate South Carolina, Western North Carolina, y'all going to definitely be in two inches of rainfall. And this is all fallen within a 24-hour period. And when you look at the NAO, North Atlantic Oscillation, according to the Euro and the GFS, let's just know about these ridges and troughs on our East Coast. You can see as you go to 15th and the 16th, it's not too strong of a ridge. But once you go from the 16th to the 17th, it goes on a higher ridge out to Northeast into Canada. At the same time, we're going to get another trough that's retracted back from Euro, a weaker trough around the 20s, and another one as we get into the middle of the 20s. So this is going to be a repeat pattern. And you can see that also here with the GFS. As you go 15th and the 16th, it's really lazy of a ridge, a little bit tighter of a ridge with GFS and Euro. But once you go from 16th to 17th, it agrees that it's going to go out on a high ridge. So the GFS has it intensifying a little bit sooner than the Euro. Euro shows that the ridge isn't going to be that strong that early. But at the same time, you can see another trough coming after that, another potential system, and after that, another potential system. This is going to be a repeat pattern for the February. And you can see that here when you look at the whole northern hemisphere. Over here on the 16th, we have all of our precipitation coming up, all our dry air from the cold temperatures. But as you look at all the precipitation coming up for the 16th and the 17th, that the storm's moving through the northeast, but you can look and see that there's the same pattern. 
We do get that trough that's coming in the early 20s, right around the 22nd, another pattern, and this is bringing precipitation way up, almost into Canada on that next one. As you go into another section for the middle of the 20s, towards the end of February, and we get another one. This is going to be a repeat pattern two or three more times. But that is the update so far. So far, it's showing weakening, guys. So I expect that snowfall rate to come down a little bit that you're seeing in the weather models because of what the data is showing weakening. It will be a lot for Canada. Canada, you need to watch out for them winds because what the Northeast is getting is going to be coming your way as well. Thank you all for visiting my channel today. Hope you have a very blessed and a very happy Sunday today. Share my video if you find the information helpful. Please hit that like button, show support. Thank you. All of you for your support, I do appreciate you very much. Now, today I want to read something that's very important, and we all should know it, but for those that don't. John 3, chapters 13 through 21. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Amen. Have a very blessed Sunday out there, guys. God bless every single one of you. As always, I will keep you updated on when this raffle is. Thank you for your support. <laughs> in all honor does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, <laughs> all the way up to God of Adam. He saved me from who I was. He gets all glory. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Have a great Sunday. I'll see you Monday morning.